As Ravens fans, I feel like so much of us are medical doctors and we unfortunately have our PhDs, our pretty hurt degrees when it comes to assessing injuries on our team and other times really throughout the league because we've seen so many Ravens players go down due to being hurt. But this year, it has been a lot different because this year, as opposed to previous years, while the Baltimore Ravens have lost a lot of guys and they have unfortunately lost a lot of guys for the entire season, a lot of the guys that they lost at some point in different points of the season, they ended up coming back. And yesterday, we got some wonderful, phenomenal news about some of the Baltimore Ravens key players that returned to practice for those Baltimore Ravens. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But just to emphasize how important it was, those guys, and how great and significant it was with those guys returning, I, I couldn't do it on my own. I had to bring on a, a phenomenal guest that can help me determine just the value of these players that the Ravens got back. Team, keep it clean. Let's get into it. So the team keep it clean. Very, very special guest, special coach uh, in the building uh, for this video today. We got Sip to Tally, Coach Evans. Uh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since we had you on, but uh, better late than never. So welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and literally like last minute too, because I literally hit you up a couple hours ago to see if you could come mm -hmm. on. And you said, yeah, you gave me the time and boom, we're knocking it out right now. So I appreciate you and I appreciate your time, Coach. Uh, no problem, no problem. But like you said, better late than never, and never late is better. <laughs> well, with that CPT time, <laughs> I'm, I'm late forever, but, but it's all good, man. So, team, keep it clean. Uh, before we get into this, make sure you subscribe to his channel. The link is down below in the description. Subscribe to his channel. A lot of y'all are here already from his channel, but subscribe to his channel. Y'all know, Coach, you good people. Leave a like on all his videos. Hit him up. Watch his videos on repeat. Show that appreciate love like I, like I know y'all would do. Oh, yeah, for appreciate sure, man. It. And the link to all his stuff, his, his YouTube channel, both his YouTube channels, <laughs> uh, the, the, the one for, for the Ravens fans and also the one for the streets. For the streets, right. <laughs> and, and, and also the link to his Twitter. It's all going to be down below uh, in the description. So we got yesterday, we got some really, really good news. Actually, great news. Actually, it's wonderful news um, because Zay Flowers, he has had a, a huge impact on these Baltimore Ravens um, from literally from jump. Like I remember when the Baltimore Ravens, when they first drafted Zay Flowers, I, I don't watch college football, so I didn't know much about him. I didn't know he was from South Florida. So I'm like, okay, he got, he, he got my vote right there. But uh, when we, I had heard so much about him, I heard how shifty he was, how crazy he was after the catch. So we started seeing the joint practices, mm -hmm. saw the joint practices. No, first, actually before the joint practices, when he was practicing against the Ravens, I heard right. so much stuff about Zay Flowers. Oh, man, he beating all these cornerbacks. He's the, the best wide receiver on the field. And I was thinking, like, oh, okay. Like, I know Ravens, they're going to hype up their own guys because that, that's their guy. That's their first-round draft pick or whatever. Odell Beckham Jr. had just got there, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't think he would go that hard, especially since he's recovering from injury. Uh, Rashad mm -hmm. Bateman, uh, he was probably doing his thing. No, maybe he was hurt that time. He was still hurt. Okay, that's what it was. So I was like, okay, well, with, with Zay Flowers being the best wide receiver on the field, is it really saying that much? So I heard that, but then – we heard, well, for the joint practices, and we saw too, because we saw the video. Mm -hmm. And Zay Flowers was just, he was getting everybody. I'm like, man, okay, well, this, this is something. Then preseason came along, and he was still killing it then. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And then I remember the first time we saw him, I think it was in the, the Washington game, whatever, or was it against the Eagles, whoever it was against, he scored a touch. And I said, no, no, we don't need to see him no more. Right. Done. He needs to be done until regular season. Uh, and then regular season came along, and, and everything just continued for Zay Flowers. The, the, the man has been extremely consistent, and everything, all the stuff that we had heard from Jump, he's shown it uh, on a professional level in the regular season, too. Mm -hmm. So with Zay Flowers returning to practice for the Baltimore Ravens, what type of impact does – I mean, it's obvious that he has a big impact on this team, but what specifically about Zay Flowers and going into this game against the Houston Texans? How can the Baltimore Ravens benefit from having him back? Well, I want, was going to say one thing before I answer that question. Okay. Brent Coleman told a story way before even all that that you just mentioned at the 
whatever the all-star game was that Zay Flowers participated in, he said, because he went, you know, Brent got access to the stuff that we don't. Mm -hmm. He went and he said that the Ravens were over uh, Zay Flowers from the jump. Oh. They told him at that, um, I remember the Shrine Bowl, I think it was the Shrine Bowl. They told him at the Shrine Bowl, if you're there, we're picking you. Mm. They had been on him from the jump and they just didn't think he was going to be there. But luckily he was there and they saw something from the jump that, like, like you said, I didn't know he. I, I didn't know he was from South Florida. I knew of him, you know, uh-huh. when I started doing the draft stuff, but I didn't know right. much about him until mm-hmm. I heard that story. Then we picked him, and then you know, my knowledge of him kind of picked up. But as far as him, his return, he's the most versatile receiver we got. To me, mm-hmm. he can he can play inside, he can play outside. He's the shiftiest receiver we got. Oh yeah. Um, he just he brings so much to the table because if you put a bigger corner on him. He has the the twitchiness to not be covered by that guy, but then he's fast enough and shifty enough and run runs good enough routes, and he's tough enough. So if you got a smaller, shiftier corner, he can beat those guys. Mm-hmm. And you can put him in the backfield, do different stuff with him. He can also be your gadget guy. He he just he's so versatile that you need him on the field to not even to to get him the ball, but you got to know where he is because he can do so many things, and that opens up stuff for other people. Mm. That's that's such a good point too about Zay Flowers and his versatility. Uh, one of my favorite uh, characteristics that you just mentioned about Zay Flowers uh, was his toughness, or is his toughness. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've seen it a lot of times throughout this season where Zay Flowers he don't shy away from contact, and Zay right. Flowers is not afraid to throw no block either. You don't care if you're bigger than him or whatever. He might be the best blocking receiver we got. Maybe next to um sixteen, next to uh what's that? Tyler Wallace. 16. Tyler Wallace, yeah. Oh, because he anytime we see a long run by the the running back, all oh, those mm. long Keaton Keaton Mitchell runs, mm. you saw Zay Flowers. Mm. You saw Zay Flowers. I never thought about that before, man. That's a, that's a really good point. So have, having Zay Flowers back is just it's crucial, man. It, it's crucial, and I'm glad that he got to get a good amount of rest because uh, the rest obviously paid off. Mm-hmm. Now I, I wonder, and it's something that we'll obviously never know, and I'm glad we don't have to find out about it, but. I wonder, had the Baltimore Ravens had to play in wild card weekend, well, super wild card weekend is what they call it now, mm-hmm. uh, would Zay Flowers have played in the game uh, if they had to play back then? But That's a good question. That's yeah. a good question. Because yeah. mm-hmm. with that calf, that calf is so, is so particular. Because anytime I hear calf, I immediately think of KD. Mm. And KD had the calf strain, and he thought it was fine, and he said, well, I'm going to go ahead and play this game. Mm-hmm. Bam. Achilles. Mm. So anytime I hear calf, I think KD and I, I like you don't play with the calf. Yeah. They can go from a, a two week thing to three sixty five. So mm. you know, I, I, I probably not. I would say no. I would say no if we played last week because mm. um, it just was well. No, he did because he didn't play versus the Steelers, did it? No, he didn't. So he might. He probably could have played. He probably could have played last week because he took that week off. So he probably should be close to. 100, depending on what type of actual calf injury it is, because all I know is just calf. I don't know if like calf strain, yeah, or bone bru- like a bone bruise or whatever. I just know calf. So he, he probably could have played if, if we had had a game last week because of already having that that week off. Yeah. Mm, well, I, I'm I'm glad that we don't even have to like we could think about it, and think about all the hypotheticals and whatnot. But I'm glad mm-hmm. that we ain't even got to realistically think about if he had to play last week since the Baltimore Ravens got their number one seed. Now, speaking of number one. Uh, one of Baltimore Ravens' first-round draft picks from a couple of years ago. He also returned to practice, that being Adafe Away. Mm-hmm. And Adafe Away, man, he's been very, very tricky. Uh, he's had a very tricky career um, because I feel like he he was drafted based off of the potential. And obviously a lot of guys are ba- drafted based off of potential about how the team feels like you could do, what you can do for them over the long run. Um, but with Adafi Away, it just seemed like it was more his athleticism that got mm-hmm. him to where, uh, to be in a first round draft pick for the Baltimore Ravens because he was not productive like that in right. college at uh, Zero Penn State. Yeah. So that's, um, and then I know that that was alarming for a lot of people. It was like, hold up, you, you're drafting a pass rusher with the number one, with the first round pick. Uh, but he hasn't had any sex. But again, sometimes numbers don't tell the whole story. Right, right. But they do tell a part of it. But um, with Adafi away this year, earlier this season, he had missed a chunk of time. And then when he came back, 
he came back and I felt like he was just on the tail. We saw like a completely different Adafi away. Now, recently, I feel like he quieted down a little bit. Maybe I'm just missing something because, again, you know the, the film much more than I do. Uh, but I feel like he got a little bit quiet. But he missed some time, but he returned to practice as well. So from Adafi away, um, what can he bring to this Baltimore Ravens defense? Now, we, we haven't gotten a lot. And I'm like, like I didn't like to pick initially. But, you know, the Adafi away of the first two seasons – to me, it's not the Adolfo Owe of 2023. Uh, well, 2020, yeah, 2023. Mm -hmm. He looks like a totally different person. Now, he only has, I think, four and a half, maybe five sacks. But as far as the way he looks on the field, he doesn't look like that that old dude. He looks totally, he's like, he says that he was already decent against the run. But now he's getting to, he's beating the the tackles mm -hmm. in, a, in a way where he wasn't before. Because in the past, all he had was like that one move. Now you can see him putting moves together. You see him trying to do the jump cross. You see him spinning off people. You see him trying to beat people with, with rush with rush moves, speed to power. So getting with um, the defensive, the Austin, I'm sorry, the offense outside linebackers coach, um, Chuck, I've got a, 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 a admiration for this guy. that I didn't know who he was before he got here. But for what he's done for Owe and some of those other guys, because Owe had one move, hmm. and now he has – he has a he has a a Publix plastic bag. He ain't got the the brown paper bag of moves yet. He got a public plastic bag yet of, of moves right now. He, he ain't upgraded the brown paper bag, but he, he at least he got some in it. But and he was already decent versus the run. But having him out there gives more versatility to a defensive line that has already surprised me this year. Mm. They they went well above and beyond my expectations, and I hope they continue to. To do that, but he's just an extra piece to that puzzle because Mike got him rolling and Chuck got him, you know, doing what they need to do in in the pass rush, and he was already a, a decent run stopper. Mm. And and speaking about run stoppers, uh, just to to transition to somebody else that returned to practice as well, uh, it was Malik Harrison, and Malik Harrison, uh, his career has been. It's been interesting because I remember when the Baltimore Ravens first drafted him, I want to say in 2020, because I think he came out with Patrick Queen. He did. Um, he was fourth round pick, I want to say. But wherever, yeah, wherever he was From drafted at, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I thought that because uh, I really envisioned that it was going to be him and Patrick Queen as the, the primary inside linebackers of the future. Uh, for the Baltimore Ravens, and it obviously didn't work out like that. But Malik Harrison has definitely found himself a respectable role uh, on this Baltimore Ravens defense and on special teams as well. But he was somebody else uh, that was added to the list of guys that returned to practice. Uh, so with Malik Harrison, um, how do you feel like him being back on the field for the Ravens could help them out? Malik Malik's role is interesting. Like you said, he he was drafted as like a, a off ball linebacker, kind of in what we thought. Well, what we have in Roquan, I think that's what we thought position wise, not player wise. Position wise, that's what I thought we was going to get in Malik. But now he's pretty much transitioned to a first, second down outside linebacker, hmm. and I think he is the best edge setter on the team. Ooh. As far as you know, in those run situations, you know, first and ten, or maybe some kind of second and short, maybe. He does a good job of setting the edge and forcing stuff back to the inside to Queen and Roquan. And, and if he's not the best one, Owe may be the best one, but having him and Owe back, you can kind of set your, your defense and funnel stuff to the middle of the defense, to those defensive tackles mm -hmm. and to Queen and, and Roquan. Now, I, I, I didn't think Malik would have a role, especially once we got uh, Roquan, but he didn't found a niche. Mm -hmm. And his niche is being that first down um outside linebacker slash edge guy. And if we stop him on first down, you see Malik running off the field because he come to pass rushes. And mm. if they get a first down, you see Malik come on back because he, he's out there for rundown. So um, if in order for him to stay, I think he's going to have to develop some pass rush moves. Now, he may have some. We just don't see him because he's not out there on passing downs. But he's a he's a great edge setter. He's great versus the run. He does a good job of taking on blockers like when they pulling – Pull, uh, when they pull or they send fullbacks at him, his physicality, and we already knew he was physical from that Tennessee mm -hmm. Titans game uh, mm -hmm. a couple years ago. So his physicality plus learning that new position, he's done a great job of setting the edge, and I think it's going to be good to keep them behind the sticks. Yeah, that's true. And th this is why I appreciate um, 
bringing on somebody like you who has extensive knowledge, especially when it comes to film study, uh, because I would have never even thought about that, about him being out there primarily on a run defense and setting the edge and, and them sort of, like you mentioned, filtering everything to the middle. Uh, so that's a, a really, really good point. Now, we're going to go off track a little bit right here, but I okay. know for you, for you, for you, this will be right on track um, because there's this one player on the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, a lot of people, they just had not been a fan of him for a long time. Um, but over the past year and a half, I think a lot of people's tune has changed on him. That being Patrick Queen. How do you feel uh, about just the emergence of Patrick Queen, the success of Patrick Queen, uh, all pro second team? Patrick Queen, because while it, it wasn't the first team all pro, second team all pro is still amazing mm -hmm. because that is still some of the best of the because, again, every team got what, 53 players on there. They still right. got practice squad guys and it's 32 teams in the league. That's a lot of people. I, I, I don't feel like doing the math right now, but that's a whole lot of players. And for you to be considered one of the best of the best, even if it's second team, that says a lot. And I know you are somebody who has said a lot about Patrick Queen. So how are you feeling about just his emergence and his success uh, and what he's done, especially over the past two years with the Baltimore Ravens? Uh, I think this is my opportunity to say, I told you. I told you. I told you. <laughs> and not, just, not you in particular, but just the, the, the masses. The masses. Mm -hmm. I always, whenever he does something good, I kind of go back to, I got a, I took a screenshot of, he did something and I was, you know, telling people to be quiet. That's my, my PQ thing. But if you look at my Twitter, that's the little caption, a PQ, PQ stand. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited for the, for the fellow man. I, I hate that he potentially may finish his career somewhere else because he's, he's really priced himself out. Now I, yeah. I knew he was pretty much gone, but to get that all pro, that means that boy finna break the bank. Mm. I finna break the bank. Because I think it was it was three on the first team. I think it was two on the second team. So that means he's one of the best five linebackers in the NFL. Mm. Oh, yeah. One of the best five. So like you were saying, second team is no slouch because they mm -hmm. that that AP all pro team is the one they put in your contract. Like if you make this, you might get this bonus, or you know, uh if, 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 if his incentives or whatnot. So for him to 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 gradually become that has been great to see, especially for me because because I was defending him before Roe even got here. Yeah. I was like, just just give it time because pe what people don't know is he came to LSU as a running back. Oh, I ain't then, know that. Then, then his last year, he wasn't even a starter that last year. He was behind the some backup linebacker that's in Cleveland right now, so he took over as the starter like game two, and then which was his second year playing linebacker. And so when he got to Baltimore, that was his third or, or fourth year playing linebacker, period. Mm. Period. So it took him a minute to kind of – and he still ain't perfect. Yeah. He's a lot better than he was when he, when he got here. Mm -hmm. Now, some people will attribute Roquan, that's the Roquan. I have to push back on that. Roquan does have some effect, but the kid was playing well before Roquan got here. That is true. Was he at an all-pro level? Probably not. Probably not. But he was playing some pretty darn good football before Roquan got here. And then Roquan got here and provided leadership for the entire defense and not just him. Mm -hmm. He took off. Yeah. He took yeah. off. And it's been uh it, it's been really, really nice to see. Um, I was pleasantly surprised this offseason because I remember when they first traded for Roquan Smith, I was like, Oh, yeah, Patrick Queen is gone. Mm -hmm. But my 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 hope was that all right, Patrick Queen got another year left on his deal. Hopefully they can ride this thing out, even though I know Baltimore Ravens, they like trading people when they're in the last year of their deal, if they don't intend on re-signing them because they want to get something rather than nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was hoping that they would make an exception for Patrick Queen because we've seen it in the past with guys like Hayden Hurst. They weren't going to re-sign him. They shipped him off. Orlando Brown Jr., they weren't mm -hmm. going to re-sign him. They shipped him off. Hollywood Brown, they weren't going to re-sign him. They shipped him off. So I was really hoping that it would not happen with Patrick Queen. And I'm so glad that they kept him. There's a very small chance. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Because like you mentioned, that that all pro that's on there, that's like, you can't take that off. Right. Uh, that's that's on his resume. And he's going to, him and his agent, they're going to talk to DaCosta and 
I just because I, I think their pri- their priority is going to be si- re-signing Matt Abike. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they really want to keep Patrick Queen, right? But you can't like well, I mean, you could. Is, is, is tough, right? Yeah, you can't disrespect him, man. You you yep. can't give because the only way that he could, in my opinion, the only way that he could stay with the Baltimore Ravens is if he signs for a disrespectfully low deal. Yep. And I would hate to see him do. I would hate to see anybody do that. I agree. But especially with everything that he's been through, like I remember, I, I love that video of Eric DaCosta telling him like, hey, you made, was it the Pro Bowl, I think? Yeah, you made the Pro Bowl. Mm-hmm. And he broke down. Yeah, yeah, that was real right there, man. Yeah. Um, So just... I, I missed my opportunity to chat with PQ this year. I really? got a, a good friend of mine that's, um he knows Derek Stingley's dad. Mm-hmm. So Derek Stingley put on this camp in Hawaii this summer. And a bunch of NFL players went out there to, you know, train or whatever. And so mm-hmm. this friend of mine, he was one of like the coaches of that camp. And he uh-huh. know, you know, he knows about my channel and whatnot, and yeah. um, that how I feel about Patrick Queen because we've had in conversations. Mm-hmm. And so they call he Facetimed me this summer, but because Hawaii is so far behind oh, us, I was sleeping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I, I missed that opportunity to to, to 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 chat with him and whatnot. And you know, I was going to ask him to come on. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. You know what? One one thing that I've learned because that's it. Literally the the same exact thing happened to me um back in 2018 uh to where one of my guys he worked at the hotel um down here where the baltimore ravens were staying at mm-hmm. and he knew it was, it was right when we drafted lamar jack or the year we drafted lamar jackson but he was staying at he was working at a hotel where the ravens were staying at that year uh for i think a preseason game maybe, maybe they took on the dolphins because yeah rg3 was here that year yeah. so um he he hit me up on, on FaceTime. T- literally, same exact thing. Hit me up on FaceTime. Lamar Jackson standing right next to him. But the one t- I always leave my phone on loud. But I was taking a nap. I was so tired. And I put my phone on silent. And I wake up. I see FaceTime. I missed FaceTime call. I'm like, well, okay, what are you FaceTiming me for? So I called him back and he told me. But one thing that I learned is that even if you miss an opportunity initially, if it's meant to happen, it, it, it's going to happen. It, it, it's going to come back around again somehow, some way. And you definitely gonna get that opportunity again. So I will not be surprised when you do have Patrick Queen on your channel, so you could talk Manifest ball with him. Manifest. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I ain't gonna be surprised when when it does happen. Not if, but but when it does go down, man. So yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. That that should be fun, man. Because uh, just being able to hear the player, it's, it's fun hearing each other speak about the Baltimore Ravens and whatnot. But then getting that 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 view and that um, just being able to hear the player speak about what they go through, everything that happens on the field, and even off the field, too, mm-hmm. uh, that, that that's special uh, as well. So, Coach, I appreciate you. This was this was real fun. Um, this was appreciate a – oh, you. yeah, for sure. I appreciate your time. I uh, appreciate your willingness to come on. And, again, everybody that's watching, team, keep it clean. Go show my guy love. I know a lot of y'all already do, uh, but go show him even more love. If you're new here, if you're old here, Go show him love. Subscribe to his channel. The link is all down below in the description. His Twitter, all down below in the description. Everything, all down below in the description just to make life easy for you. Any closing words, Coach, before we get out of here? Hey, uh, on Instagram, you can find me. On TikTok, you can find me at Sip to Tally Films. Twitter, Coach Evans 9. YouTube, Sip to Tally. And more Sip to Tally. Run the numbers up. And I appreciate you for having me on, man. It's always good to talk ball. For sure, man. Appreciate your team. Keep it clean. I love y'all. Thanks for everything. And we out.